Hey guys, today I'm going to be talking about 1.1.8 as the part of the blueprint of life syllabus. Analyze information from secondary sources on the historical development of theories of evolution and use available evidence to assess social and political influences on these developments. So okay, um, from the start point we know that our main focus areas today are social and political influences on these developments. Developments referring to theories of evolution and that's pretty much it. So that's what I'm going to be looking at. Today, we'll be looking at social and political influences. Okay, this is going to be a relatively qu quick lesson, I hope. And these are the people I'm going to be covering. So we've got Jean-Baptiste de Lamarck, we've got Thomas Math uh, Malthus, we've got Charles, L Charles Lyell, Herbert Spencer, Alfred Wallace, and Charles Darwin. All these names should have a little bit of familiarity if you did do the science courses or have done the science courses earlier on, or perhaps even the prelim bio unit. Okay, let's move on. So, Jean Baptiste de Lamarck. Okay, he believed in organisms passed on traits acquired in their lifetime, uh, but this was soon discredited by evidence of hereditary uh, mechanisms. So, like, what actually happened is that he believed that these traits were uh, the traits that were passed on were acquired in their lifetime somehow through the environment, through whatever causes, and they were passed on. But this was actually wrong, and mainly because of the hereditary, hereditary mechanisms, such as the gene, genes and all that, which we ended up finding. And we ended up realizing that, no, it's not like that. We're not made through differences inside our actual lifetime. And that was discredited. Okay, so it was mainly important this this actual theory that he actually he he brought out was only an impact and it it only impacted us and uh had an influence because he proposed changes over time were natural not divine meaning that he wasn't saying that god was causing it he was he was saying that it was because of natural causes okay so let's move on quickly to the next one Thomas Malthus. Now, I've heard this name a thousand times, and I've done sciences before, so I'm sure you mu guys must remember some sort of thing, and if not, it's just a quick recap. You don't need to know much more, just some impacts that he's had. So, he believed populations increased in size until checked by the environment. And when I say checked by the environment, I mean, uh, for example, famine, disease, uh, widespread mortality, anything that killed or you know anything that affected the like uh, the population sizes, and what he believed is that these populations they just kept on increasing in size until checked by the environment. So okay, that's that's fairly significant. Let's move on to Charles Lyell. Now Charles Lyell, um, he didn't actually have such a big role in evolution, but he did find a different theory called the geological theory of uniform. Uh, uniformitarianism. So, th wh what that theory said was that Earth's features were a result of a slow geological process, and that kind of led to these, um, you know, ideas about evolution. Is that what if it's the same, you know? So that's the impact he had. And then as we move on, we have Herbert Spencer, um, and he introduced the concept survival of the fittest, which is the concept that you guys will learn and you guys will go through because it's a very important concept. And if you guys are just wondering what it is, it's when an organism can only survive if it's best suited to an environment. Okay. And now lastly, the longest one that I've got here, Alfred Wallace and Charles Darwin. They're the two of my favorite, and this is what I'm going to talk to you about. Um, they came up with detailed, a, a, a detailed account of evolution based on the principles listed before. And what they did what they did was they used to exchange letters and ideas and this way they were allowed to uh, they, they were able to get this information across and it helped them both in their research what, what actually happened is that Darwin's work was highly acclaimed and people liked it and really recognized it but also ridiculed it at the same time whereas Charles uh, whereas Alfred Wallace no one cared his work was greatly underlooked and uh, overlooked and no one really cared about it so if you guys are wondering what Charles Darwin actually did is that he produced this book called On the Origin of Species. And th that was the only reason he was recognized and also ridiculed. And this, this book explained evolution in the most detailed account that he could come up with, and his observations of Galapagos Island and whatnot. Wallace, however, his contributions were just completely overlooked. And if you guys are wondering what he actually did, one of the main things I would probably remember is his uh, development of Wallace's line. The line which splits up Asian parts with Australia and 
uh, consequently, the fauna of Asia and the fauna of Australia, which was a really big uh, find, because that showed us that evolution, you know, it happens, and it happens suited to the environment. So the fauna in Australia was were different to the fauna in Asia, and therefore it kind of proved a little bit. Okay, so that's it for this lesson. I was trying to be really quick, and I really do hope it helps. That's it for this dot point. Thanks for watching.